learners and listeners welcome to nis studio i am dr shweta and today we would be talking about vocational choice and vocational adjustment work is a very important part of one's life but every person is not suited for every kind of job almost every type of job requires a basic minimum level of education it also requires a person to have certain skills or abilities which will be necessary in order to carry out the duties on the job it is also important that personality and interest of the person must match with the requirements of the job we've already discussed about work career development and now we would be talking about what is vocational choice and how do we adjust in our vocation related to these is the aspect of one's adjustment to the work situation we will also be knowing about Uh, the vocational adjustment that is as i said that is the job satisfaction the work motivation which a person has once he gets into a job uh, because it is very important to know about the various work situations particularly the organization the small and big like shops and factories offices and the organizational work structure culture only then you will be knowing that how do we adjust in a particular vocation at the end of this program you would be able to explain the need for educational planning and vocational choice you would also be able to state the importance of considering the ability and personality factors when you are making a vocational choice explaining the importance of interest in making a vocational choice is also very important and you would be able to explain it at the end of the uh, lesson uh you would be able to describe what is job satisfaction and what are the various factors that leads to job satisfaction and also we would be discussing about the concept and theories of work motivation at the end of this program you will be able to describe what an organization is and what is the organizational work culture so before uh, we begin with other topics the first topic is we must know that what is educational and vocational planning that is how do we uh, do planning before uh, choosing a particular vocation without a basic minimum level of education you can only get jobs which require manual labor for example if you want to take a job in a government office the minimum qualification which is required or the minimum education which is required is class 8 with this level of education one can get the job of a peon or a chaukidar in order to do a job certain skills or abilities are also required uh, we have uh, different systems of uh, education one of them is general education so uh, general education in school and colleges serves the purpose of providing with certain basic skills for example reading writing arithmetic skills uh, general education also helps you to have knowledge about the environment and the surroundings it also tells us that what is our culture and what are the desirable attitudes that uh, are required as per the cultural norms also the general education clears uh, the understanding about the values that are in accordance with the expectation of the society in which we are living in so the goal of general education is to allow the development of positive attitude and respect for all types of work which are required to be carried out for the proper functioning of society the term general education is education from primary level to college level that means any education that you take up uh, uh, since your uh, starting from your primary up to your college level covers your general education and in which we have the elementary education the secondary education the higher secondary education and the education that is graduation and above so this is all what we cover in the general education apart from the general education as i already said that there are certain professional technical and vocational courses also which help in getting certain specific types of skills examples of the professional courses are uh, for example medicine a course in medicine that is to become a doctor or a course in engineering uh, with which you become an engineer uh there are technical courses also technical courses uh, gives you certain kinds of skills that are required uh, when you go for particular vocations 
For example, we have ITI and other diploma courses as well as courses for electricians and mechanics etc. also we have uh, under the technical courses. The minimum level of general education which is required for getting certain jobs and for admission to certain courses for special training is 10 standard. Those with lower level of education can get manual work or unskilled jobs. Entry to the jobs at the lower levels, for example, in clerical positions, lower positions in the police departments or in the armed forces. For a large number of jobs, the higher secondary students have to do some advanced level of courses in skill training for jobs such as radio and TV mechanic, refrigeration, air conditioning and stenography etc. For many other jobs such as those through competitive examination, the graduation which is either your BA, BSc or BCom degree is required. These examinations or these jobs include the civil services like IS etc, clerical and officer level jobs in banks, management trainees in government undertakings for example steel authority of India or uh, bail and the insurance agents like LIC, GIC etc. That means in order to uh, sit in for these exams or get these uh, uh, positions you must have minimum uh, education which is your bachelor's degree which can be BA, BSc or BCom. Graduation degree is also minimum requirement for admission to professional courses like the management courses or the teaching courses etc. You must now be having a clear idea by now of the importance of educational qualification for different types of jobs. It is therefore necessary for you to plan carefully the type and level of educational qualification which you need for the job of your interest. Now once you know that what are the minimum level of qualifications that are required for different kinds of job, it is also important that you should know that what are the ability and certain personality characteristics that are relevant to vocational choice. Each type of job or occupation requires a characteristics pattern of abilities and personality traits. For example, to be a successful architect you have to be original, creative, imaginative, systematic, practical, determined etc. Psychologists have actually identified certain types of personalities which are suitable for certain types of jobs. Though everyone is not having all the personality characteristics that we would be discussing here. But this uh, discussion will give us a fair idea about the suitability of specific persons for specific jobs that is suitability of your personality with the kind of job which you are choosing or suitability of the kind of job as per your personality characteristics. One way of understanding the relationship between personality characteristics and job is to consider these categories which I am mentioning. So, uh, as I said that psychologists have defined certain personality characteristics that are related to uh, different kinds of professions. So, first of uh, those categories is the realistic one that means those people who are realistic individuals. Uh, who, how do we know that who is a realistic person uh, if we want to know that what is the personality of an individual. A realistic individual would generally be energetic and he would be, he or she would be physically strong. The person uh, uh, with a realistic attitude will be having a good motor coordination skills but he or she may lack the verbal and interpersonal skills or may be uh, uncomfortable in social settings because they are not very good at the interpersonal skills. Uh, these people are usually very uh, direct in whatever they say, they are stable, natural and they are persistent in the efforts that they are doing for any task that they take up. They prefer concrete to abstract problems which means that something which is in their hands and they can see and they can work over it. But working on abstract problems might not be that comfortable for such uh, people who are realistic. These people usually have an aggressive tendency. Uh, there are different types of occupations that uh, suits for such individuals who are realistic in their attitude. They can be mechanics, engineers, electricians, crane operators, tool designers etc. Because 
Now you can relate it with what I just discussed that is they would prefer the concrete uh, problem solving as compared to the abstract. So what an engineering is doing there is something in his hand and or what a mechanic is doing there is something which is uh, uh, which is there in there in front of him and he needs to work over it. Now uh, we just discussed that who are realistic individuals as per psychologists. Now there are uh, there is another category of people who are investigative. So who are investigative people? Uh, we would call anyone an investigative individual who have a scientific bent of, bent of mind. Uh, which means they would be very task oriented and they would be thinking all the time. Uh, they are prone to thinking because uh, they uh, are just thinking about the different ideas or research or on the, uh, uh, they, they want to go into the depth of any uh, situation or problem. Uh, they are also not very comfortable with people and those people who are investigative, they have a great need to understand the physical world. That is, they prefer to work independently. They would not uh, want to work in groups. That is what I discussed that they may not be very comfortable with the other people who are around. Uh, these kind of people who are actually investigative type, they uh, do not want to, they may, they might not want to hold the leadership positions, but they are very confident of their intellectual abilities. Uh, the profession that suits uh, such people who are investigative types are scientists, researchers, zoologists or psychologists. Now there is another category of people, those individuals whom we call the artistic individuals. So as the name suggests, what, who is an artistic person? The artistic individual would prefer the unstructured situations with the maximum opportunity for self-expression. That is uh, something which is abstract and the artist, uh, artistic individual would want to find out that what can be there in the situation and he or she would want to have the opportunity for as much self-expression as, uh, as it is possible in a, uh, in a situation. Uh, these kind of people are usually very creative especially in the areas of art and music. Uh, artistic individuals would avoid any problems which are highly structured and prefer uh, living in situations which require self-expressions related to art. Now you can differentiate between those who are realistic and those who are artistic. In the realistic category, we discuss that these kind of people actually prefer to have structured situations. And when we are discussing about the artistic individual, it is very much clear that because they want the self-expression and they would want uh, to uh, work on the unstructured situations, so they would always uh, avoid something which is highly structured. The occupations which uh, suits uh, such kind of individuals are the artists, the writers or the musicians etc. The another category of people are those individuals who are very social in their nature. So as the name suggests social means that such individual would uh, like to involve with, pe with people and uh, would uh, love to work in the groups setting. Uh, because they are social, they would always uh, prefer to have the central positions in the groups. Uh, the religious and have uh, these kind of individuals are usually religious and they have good language and interpersonal skills. Why uh, language and interpersonal skills of these individuals are good? Because they would want to interact with as much people uh, as they can who are around them. Uh, these kind of people enjoy activities uh, which are very informing, training, curing and helping etc. Uh, the vocational preferences of the people uh, who are very social are they can be social workers, they can be school teacher or they can be religious teacher etc. The next category of individual are those individuals who are very effective with the verbal skills for selling dominating, leading, etc. These kind of people have a very strong desire to achieve organizational goals and economic gain because they are, uh, they have uh, the dominating uh, uh, ability in them, they, they, they are, because these kinds of people are very dominating and uh, they are very leading. So such people 
are usually aggressive and they are very popular among the group. These people are very self-confident and they are always cheerful, social and they have high energy level. So, the vocational preferences of such individuals can be the business executive positions, they can be politicians, uh, property dealers, uh, stock brokers, businessmen, etc. The last category of individual is those individuals who are, who are conventional. So, uh, the conventional individual usually prefer well-ordered environment and systematic activities that involve verbal communication or dealing with the numbers. Uh, these kind of people would avoid any situations that involve social dealing or physical skill. Uh, these people enjoy power and the material possession. The vocational preferences for such individuals can be that they can be in the banking, banking job, they can be in the clerical jobs, they can be traffic policemen or shop salesmen etc. So these were the six categories described above and they all will give you a good idea about the relationship between the personality characteristics and the vocational choice. The categories that we have just discussed cannot be taken as final because there are overlaps between these categories and most people will not fall exactly in only one of these categories that we just mentioned. Nevertheless, this description captures the important relationship between abilities, personality characteristics and vocational choices. Now, when we have discussed that what are the different kinds of uh, uh, abilities that are required for doing a particular job and how can we match our abilities and our uh, personalities with the vocation that we want to take up. After this, we must know uh, that there is a question that always comes to our mind that will you be able to do this job? Are you uh, qualified enough or skilled enough to do the job? Let us find out an answer to this uh, question in the uh, coming discussion. Even though most of us have a reasonably good idea about our abilities and personality characteristics, we do not have the complete or accurate picture. Uh, there are psychological tests that have been developed and which help in preparing a profile or description of an individual's abilities and personality characteristics. You can go to a psychologist, vocational counsellor and uh, the counsellor or the psychologist will administer relevant psychological tests and provide you with an ability or personality profile and will also guide you in making an appropriate vocational choice. When you apply for jobs in different organizations directly or through competitive examination, the organization assesses your abilities and personality characteristics with the help of certain tests. They already have a certain profile in mind which their experience has shown is suitable for the vacant job positions. These organizations obtain your personality profile and match it with their requirements and thus judge your suitability for the job. Uh, by now you must have got a clear picture of the importance of abilities and personality characteristics for vocational choice as I just mentioned. But for getting any job, you first require a minimum educational qualification, but that is not enough. There are certain skills uh, that are required in any vocation. Vocational choice is an emerging perspective. Let us understand that uh, what is it. When I discuss that there are certain skills that are required for doing a particular job, this means that it is very vast. Whenever you are choosing a vocational uh, uh, area, you must know that what are your interests because your interest is very important aspect in your vocational choice and it is also very important for deriving satisfaction from one's job. We just discussed in the last uh, lesson and in the last program about uh, two individuals, one who was a driver and one who was an engineer. The driver was very happy with whatever he was doing, but the engineer was not happy because he had taken the engineering profession because of the pressure of his parents and relatives. So that means he, because he was not interested in being an engineer, that is why he was not happy with his profession. But the driver was very much happy in his profession. That means what is your interest 
your interest will define that what career you should choose for yourself. Psychologists have developed uh, measures which help in identifying one's interest. These measures require you to indicate your choice for different types of activities. With the help of this, a psychologist or a vocational counsellor will be able to provide a clear picture of your interest. It is very necessary that you be aware of the minimum educational qualification that is required for a job, the abilities and personality characteristics that are appropriate for that job and the amount of interest which you are having to uh, get a particular type of job. You must also remember that your abilities and personality characteristics are not entirely fixed because we already, I already mentioned that it is not uh, possible that each individual would fit into one particular category or, or personality characteristics that is whatever we discussed the realistic or the artistic or the other four that we discussed. Uh, they change with time. That is your personality characteristics keep on changing with time and you can bring about a change deliberately as well through training and self-awareness in the desired direction. Interest also change with time. Also, you may find that many a times you do not have much interest in some job even though you are suited for it in all other aspects. But are being exposed to that job for some time you may find that you have developed some interest in it. That is, maybe what happens sometimes that you have all the required qualifications that are required for a particular job. But when you go to uh, go for doing that job, you find that you are not finding it very satisfied. So, as I discussed, how do you know that you are satisfied or not satisfied in the present job? Do you want to change your job or do you want to stay in the same job? So, in order to know that whether you are satisfied or not satisfied in a particular job, uh, we must know that there are various factors that influence job satisfaction. Let us know that what are these different factors. There are two types of factors that influence your job satisfaction. One type of factor are known as the organizational factors that is the factors that are in the job and another type of factors are known as the personal factors that is the factors that are related either to your personality type or to your personal situations. So, let us discuss about the organization factors first. So, in the organization factors, first of all, reward is re what kind of rewards you are getting, you are getting rewards or you are not getting rewards contribute the satisfaction uh, uh, in the job. The rewards can be uh, tangible or intangible. Tangible means something which can be touched that means your pay is always increasing, uh, you get many facilities etc. And intangible is that uh, something that you, you are satisfied with the conditions that are around you. You are satisfied uh, with your boss's praise for example. So, uh, these includes the raise in uh, pay, perks, facility and promotion and uh, these uh, uh, aspects contribute to a major factor in job satisfaction. One of these is promotion. Another factor which contribute to job dissatisfaction or to job satisfaction is the working conditions. What kind of conditions you are working in? What, ki what is the working conditions? What are the working conditions in, the, uh, in, in your organization? For example, availability of necessary furniture, lighting facilities and work hazards also play a major role in the job satisfaction. For example, the place where you are working, the AC is not working properly. That may hamper your job satisfaction or the way you are doing your work. You uh, might be required to work in the field settings where you have to travel a lot. So, whether you like traveling or you do not like traveling would add to your job satisfaction or dissatisfaction. There can be work hazards also that play a major role in job satisfaction. Work hazards can be of any kind, any type. For example, are you required to, uh, is it required that you work with big machines? Is there a danger that is involved when you are working uh, uh, with the equipments uh, that you are required to work in an organization? So, these all conditions uh, are responsible for the uh, job satisfaction or dissatisfaction of individual and they are known as the physical working conditions. Another factor that will contribute to your job satisfaction is the cooperation. Cooperation means the working environment, your colleagues, 
the attitude of staff members it is also very important uh, factor in the job satisfaction of the person if you do not feel comfortable with the people around you you will not be satisfied in the job and you would always want to change your job so why job satisfaction is important we must know that there are certain factors and that is why we always look in for job satisfaction let us know about these factors first of all job satisfaction is very important factor for your mental health that is if you are under continuous stress or tension that may lead to many maladjustments in your behavior it might affect your physical health that is you uh, if uh, a person is suffering from health problems like headache heart or digestion related diseases etc then it would not be possible for the individual if the person is not satisfied and uh, uh, it is affecting any individual's physical health then also uh, the person will not be able to contribute much to the organization and the output that a person gives after doing a certain job is only possible if the individual is happy if he or she is not happy with the kind of environment he is working uh, the person is working with then the output is not going to be very good work motivation is also very important what is work motivation it is actually a driving force that pushes you to do certain kind of job and the success of any organization will depend on the motivation of its employees if the employees are not motivated enough then the output also decreases but if the uh, employees of any organization have high motivation the organization always rises so uh, uh, this was all about the different kinds of educational requirements vocations vocational choice personality characteristics job satisfaction but at the end of this discussion uh, i would want to tell you that what is an organization because we have been discussing that at the end of the day we need to work in an organization so what is an organization we must know so an organization can be any uh, thing like for example an organization can be a school can be a bank can be a police station insurance company college university district courts or high courts and you are ultimately required in to work in the organization so dear learners this was all about today's program but before we end up i would just summarize that what we discussed we discussed about the vocational choice why it is important how do we uh, go about choosing a particular career what are the different types of uh, educations uh, that, uh, uh, that that is required and uh, we discussed that there is general education there are certain types of technical uh, educations and Uh, other skill based tra trainings that are required we also discussed that there are certain personality characteristics that must be met if you want to have a job satisfaction and we uh, at the end of this program we discussed about the factors that uh, affect the job satisfaction which is your personal factors or the organizational factors personal factors include all the uh, factors that are related to the person itself and the organization factors as i discussed can be the physical conditions uh can be uh, the work motivation etc so i hope that you have understood the topic well thank you for today's program